reclining rear seats, slow closed doors, and airbags for your knees? That's right, today I'm reviewing what has been my daily driver for the past four and a half years. Her name is Lexi, she is a 2009 Lexus LS460 and she has some of the upgraded packages. So I'm gonna do a quick review today on what this car has been like to own for the past four and a half years. I'm actually getting ready to sell Lexi, but it's not because I don't like the girl, it's just I'm ready for an SUV. So I just wanna tell you some of the things I've loved about this car, some of the things I haven't loved about this car and whether or not a 2009 or this generation of LS460 is a bargain considering you can pick one up at this point for around $13,000. So I purchased this car about four and a half years ago. I was moving down from Oregon. I had just graduated college and at the time I had a 2002 Forerunner which was also an awesome car but considering I just gotten my real estate license I was going to be selling homes in Los Angeles. I wanted a car that was just a bit nicer, a nicer place for clients to sit. Funny enough, I didn't end up having to drive that many clients around in my car. It doesn't really happen that much anymore, but the few clients that I have driven around have had a lovely place to sit in this car. But starting here in the back seat, it is a really nice place to be, and this is one of the things that actually sold me on this car, because when I was looking, originally I was looking at a Lexus RX, which is a really nice SUV, a great place to be as well. But after one test drive of a 2007 LS460 with that V8, and rear wheel drive and 380 horsepower, it was really hard to go back the other way. So. Like I said, this is a 2009, and I purchased the 2009 because the 2007s and 2008s had, um, well, number one, 2007 was the first year this generation of LS came out, and I never like to buy the first generation of a car because you never know what sort of kinks they're still working out. By 2009, they had fixed some of the issues. There's a little bit of a wind noise issue uh, above the front, uh, passenger windows, and uh, they were able to resolve that in 2009, 2010, from what I've seen. But starting here in the back seat, it is a really nice place to be. Now, I'm not a massive dude. I'm only five foot seven. Plenty of headroom for me, obviously. You know, there's plenty of leg room. This seat right now, this front seat, is where I keep it for driving, and I have plenty of leg room back here. And then on the other side, you know, you have controllers right here, makes it really easy to adjust the seat, but you can have a passenger sit up front and a passenger sit in back. And there's plenty of room, I would say, for someone above six feet as well, no problem. And these seats back here are comfortable. Now, the one thing that really caught my eye about this model of car was the reclining rear seats. That sounds nice. And it took me a while to find all the features I wanted in this car in this color scheme. You'll see a lot of uh, the LS460s that have black seats and then that very bright red trim, which was not the style I wanted in my car personally. So it took me a while to find this color scheme that also had heated and cooled rear seats and also reclining rear seats. So as you can see, you've got three controls here and you can recline the seat, you can move the backrest forward and back, and then also you can move the headrest. You also have four rear seat vents here to keep passengers cool. And then in the back, you of course have the sunshade, which can be controlled both from the front and back seat. And also as a real estate agent, I found myself using this back seat as a mobile office on many occasions in between appointments. It's a really nice place to be to pull out your laptop, send a couple of quick emails and um, there's plenty of space between me and the front seat that I can actually pull out my laptop and get some work done and it is not an issue whatsoever. This car also has a really good sized trunk, which has been nice for doing some weekend getaways. I love the fact that this part, the arm that comes down actually goes into itself so it doesn't take up any room in your trunk. So it can always be frustrating in those cars when you think you got everything to fit and you got this bar that comes down and like smashes a box. So that's been nice and I know a lot of cars nowadays have that but first car for me that had it so definitely an exciting thing. So I figured I'd get behind the wheel and just drive for a bit and tell you what I've loved about this car and some of the things that I haven't liked as much. 
overall it's been an awesome car it's got one of the smoothest rides on the road even though it was made in 2009 the body doesn't look outdated and overall it's just been an awesome car i would say my favorite thing about the car are the features there's just so many things that this car can do that you wouldn't expect as you've already seen the reclining rear seats you've got heated and cooled rear seats heated and cooled uh, seats up front as well and I keep finding new features with the car even after four and a half years like I just realized the car has airbags for your knees which is just uh, who would have thought there were airbags for your knees in a car another thing I love about this car is the Mark Levinson sound system it just sounds freaking awesome now I have a background in music so for me a great sound system isn't just a bunch of bass I think bass is great I love bass but for me, what makes a great sound system is something where you can literally hear all the instruments and it just sounds really nice and well balanced. And the Mark Levinson sound system does that extremely well. Now, I recently rode in a 2016 BMW 7 Series with a Bowers and Wilkins audio system, which sounded great. But compared to this 2009 Mark Levinson system, even though you don't have as many controls, you can't modify every single frequency band uh, you know, you don't have as, as much control there. You can pretty much just control bass, mids, and highs. I still think this system sounds way better. It really sounds like you're surrounded by the sound and just in it. And there's still great bass. It, it just sounds freaking awesome. And I can't really show you that in the video. You just have to sit in one for yourself and experience it. Also, the stereo does have a setting for either stereo sound or surround and the surround I think sounds freaking awesome. Basically what it's doing is probably some form of manipulation, probably messing with phase or something like that, but it sounds just great. It literally sounds like you are in the music when you turn on that mode. So I just keep that on at all times. The infotainment system in general in this car is really not bad for it being a 2009. It has the navigation, and honestly, we all use our phones at this point, so that is something missing, is that you can't connect to like Apple CarPlay or something like that. But as far as just having the map up, so you can figure out where you need to turn on streets and stuff like that, great map for that. And the radio, how everything's laid out, after you get the hang of it, it's really easy. It's all touch screen. In fact, when I've taken my car in to get work done and they've given me a loaner car, which is normally a newer RX, I always wish that I could have this system back. To me, I'm kind of old school. I wish they kept the six buttons out for flipping between radio stations. Now they don't have physical buttons in this car, but there is a screen to where you have all of your radio presets that you can click. So it's basically the same thing and it's still really easy to navigate. Whereas the new mouse thing that Lexus has done I don't think it's that great. Also, as far as features go, I never would have thought much about a heated steering wheel. It sounds a bit like a gimmick to me, but when it's cold out, the heated steering wheel really does a lot. It is such a nice thing to get in your car, turn on your heated steering wheel, have your hands warm, turn on your heated seat, have your butt warm, and get going before the rest of your car is even warm. You already feel like a million bucks. Well, unfortunately, I sold my car halfway through making this video, which is also a good thing because I got a great price for it. But at the same time, I didn't get to film everything I wanted to, which is a bummer. But I'm going to make good on my promise. I'm going to tell you all the good things about the car, uh, some of the bad things, and whether or not I think it's a bargain to purchase a used LS460 at this point. Now, before we do that, if you've enjoyed this video up to this point, please just take a second and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm rhythm and I'll give you just a few seconds to do that. All right, I've got the feeling that you've hit that like button. So thank you for that. And what are the best things about an LS460? Number one, the LS460 has a timeless design. Now it's not the most eye-catching design ever, but it's definitely elegant, it's clean, and it doesn't look like a design that's gonna be dated anytime soon. Number two, the LS460 has a powerful V8 engine producing anywhere from 360 to 380 horsepower with a zero to 60 time of roughly 5.5 seconds. So if you're used to driving sports cars, not that impressive, but at the same time, you gotta consider you're driving a 4,500 pound luxury boat 
down the street. So it's definitely not a slug either. Also, considering the fact that it does have a V8, it gets impressive gas mileage in my opinion. So I like doing some cross country drives, did a lot of driving from Southern California to Oregon. And when I was on the freeway, just keeping it straight, about 75 miles an hour, I could get 30 miles per gallon and sometimes a little more. Now, considering that the LS460 has about a 21 uh, gallon tank, you've got pretty close to a 600 mile range with that car, which makes it an excellent choice for road trips. Number three, it's a very quiet, well-built and smooth ride. I mean, mine was about 11 years old when I sold it and it didn't have any rattles in the cabin. It was super quiet. You could almost whisper to your passenger without any issue. So overall, it just had one of the best rides on the road. Number four, compared to a lot of other luxury sedans, this is a very reliable car. And the Lexus brand in general tends to be reliable. And I don't just mean engine wise either. I had my LS for four and a half years. And when I sold it, everything still worked. The heated seats, uh, the reclining seats, all the features still worked in that car. So that's pretty impressive considering it's an 11 year old car. Number five, this car has loads of features. Obviously, if you're purchasing a car from 2007 to 2012, it's gonna have less features than a newer car has, but still, so many people were impressed that car was a 2009. A lot of people thought it was a newer car. Lastly, I know I've already said how awesome that Mark Levinson sound system is, but I just have to say it again. The sound system in that car is great. Now, of course, not everything with the car was sunshine and rainbows. So here are some of the things you might wanna think about if you're gonna purchase an LS460. Number one, it is a long car and I had the regular length. You can also get a 460L, which has an extra six inches of rear seat leg room. Now to put that in perspective, a Grand Cherokee is anywhere from 10-ish to 15 inches shorter than an LS460. So this is a long car. And I definitely felt that length as a real estate agent in Los Angeles. I had a lot of parallel parking and there were definitely spots that I could not squeeze into because of how long that car was. And on those same lines, that car always felt a little difficult to park just in general. I don't know if it's something with the shape of the body or what, but it always seemed difficult to gauge where I was in the lines of a parking spot. But luckily you do have parking sensors, you have a rear backup camera, so that was helpful, but sometimes it felt a little more difficult to park than you'd expect from a sedan. So number two, and this is one of the biggest issues I had with this car, is the brakes were a little funky for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's this funky, doingy, poppy sound that the brakes make. It's not super loud. If you're listening to the radio, you're probably not gonna notice it, but I have sensitive ears and I notice every little sound coming from my car, which is kind of a curse. But when I was stopping, especially when it was cold, you'd hear like this slight like dun dun or popping sound, which was the funkiest thing. And I took it to the Lexus dealership multiple times. They flushed the brake lines. Uh, they put in new brake actuators. They did the whole shebang and it would take it away sometimes for a little bit and then it would come right back. And what I came to realize from reading different forums and talking to another LS460 owner is that's just an issue you have to deal with having an LS460. The brakes make a slightly funky noise. There's just not much you can do about it, I guess, unless you wanna do uh, aftermarket brakes of some kind. The other issue with the car was the brakes are a little bit grabby and I didn't really love how they felt. If you were stopping normally, there's really no issue. They're, they're sensitive brakes, but when you're trying to stop quickly or you put your foot down on the brake fast, even if you're not going all the way to the floor, there's almost a delay for a split second and then the actuator or whatever would grab the brake disc and it would almost jolt the car. I actually woke up my girlfriend sleeping a couple of times because it's, it's jarring. It almost feels like you're about to uh, hit something. So that was just a little funky. When I talked to Lexus, they basically their excuse is, well, it's a heavy car, that's what it's gonna do. But I've driven other heavy cars that do not have brakes that feel like that. But again, this is kind of a minor issue. It's just, I didn't love how it felt, but the car always stopped. Never had an issue per se with the brakes. Number three, the LS460 is a heavy car, so you can experience some control arm issues. In fact, luckily it was covered by warranty, but I had about $6,000 worth of control arm replacement stuff I had to do 
after I purchased the car. So that's just something to think about. It's an expensive car in general, so fixing things can be pricey. Also, overall, the seats in that car are very comfortable, but I did find that the front seats weren't as comfortable as I would have liked them to be. So I did some road tripping in the car, and I could do it, it was fine, it was more comfortable than a lot of other cars, but at the same time, the driver's seat and the front passenger seat never felt as comfortable as they should. But I stand by what I said about the back seats. They're great, super comfy, you can spend a lot of time there. It's just the front driver's seat and the front passenger seat that could have been a little more plush. Another interesting thing about this car is it takes a lot of oil. So whereas a normal car takes roughly 4.5 to 5 quarts of oil, this car takes 9.1 to 9.5 quarts. And there are multiple occasions where I took it in to get the oil changed and I would try to confirm up front like what is the price gonna be for the oil and they would always say a number and I'd say, are you sure? And then halfway through, it would always happen. They'd come out and say, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much oil this car takes. And then it would end up being more expensive. So just be prepared that oil changes are gonna be more expensive with this car than with some other cars. Last but not least, this car has a big gas tank and it only takes premium gas. So that can be kind of expensive sometimes. I was spending anywhere from 70 bucks to 80 bucks just to fill that thing up. And uh, if you're driving around the city, you're gonna be eating through gas pretty quickly. But if you compare it to some other V8s, it's actually pretty economical. And considering what you get with the car, I think it's worth it. So with all this in mind, is purchasing a used LS460 a smart move? I just checked Kelly Blue Book. You can pick up one of these cars from about 9,500 to 12,500 right now. And I would say, for what you get with one of these cars, it is absolutely a banging deal to purchase an LS460 in that price range. But that does come with a caveat. You gotta remember that this is a luxury vehicle. And at this point, a lot of these cars have 130,000, 150,000 miles on them. And when things go wrong on these cars, it is expensive. In fact, when I purchased my car, I, ended up purchasing a $3,000 platinum warranty from Lexus. I bought it from a Lexus dealership, used with about 50,000 miles on it. So I purchased a three year, uh, 36,000 mile platinum warranty, bumper to bumper, $0 deductible. And I am so happy I did because it paid for itself twice over. I had about $6,000 in control arm issues, I believe. I hope I'm not getting that number wrong. And I also had, uh, one of the problems I had with the car was the electronic power steering went out one day and I had to have it towed. And luckily it was still under warranty, so I had that fixed uh, for free, which was nice. That would have been another $900, I think, roughly repair bill, if not more. And then the last issue I had with the car, because overall I didn't have any issues other than the normal flat tires and, and stuff, normal maintenance. But I had another engine issue and I was trying to find the receipt and I couldn't find it, but there was some issue with the spark plugs of some kind and that cost another $800 to $900 to have fixed. That one did come out of my pocket, but everything else had been covered by my platinum warranty. So I would say if you are gonna purchase one of these vehicles, you might wanna think about buying one of those warranties because there's a high likelihood it's gonna pay for itself and it's just nice to have that peace of mind, even if you have a hundred dollar deductible or something like that. So if you're looking for a top of the line luxury sedan in this segment, and you want the most reliable thing in this segment, I would say without a doubt, go with an LS460. And it kind of shows the reliability when you start looking for LS460s for sale compared to you know a BMW 7 Series. You're gonna find a ton, a ton of used 7 Series easily. They're freaking everywhere. But LS460s are a little more of a hunt, especially trying to find the right features, and that's because they are reliable and people keep them forever. Also, one thing that's nice is at this point, the cars have depreciated quite a lot. And my car new, I think was 70 to $80,000. And when I purchased it out the door, I was at about 30. And unfortunately when I sold it, I sold it for 13. It was really painful having that much depreciation in a car. But at the same time, now that it's depreciated that far, I mean, how much are you gonna lose if you end up wanting to sell the car in 
the future. And at the end of the day, you're probably not buying this car as an investment. You're buying it because you want the features and you want the comfort. Well, I hope this was helpful. If you're an LS460 owner and you think I missed something, definitely leave it in the comments. Or if you just have questions in general, I'm happy to help as much as possible. Have a good rest of your day.